Another week of PGA Tour action on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. You can also find our videos still on Prime Sports Network. And that's because, you know, I, I know we don't have our numbers out the way that we want. Uh, we're, 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 I don't know, combined we're at about 300 viewers, which is a little less than what we had last year. But uh, this is important to note, everybody, and this is real important. And that is the fact that um, we only have a limited amount of subscribers. And so uh, we really, and I know we have a lot more viewers than that. So it is very important. And we really hope that you guys can, you guys, your girls can definitely subscribe to our channel um, because that's everything that makes uh, us and all the hard work that we put together um, uh, worth it. And that's the whole reason we do it. And so the subscribers, that's all we ask. It doesn't cost anything. You know, liking the video is also awesome and sharing it. All that stuff is all just cream on the top. But uh, if you could subscribe to the videos, I mean, this would be really, really cool because I know we have enough viewers to have more subscribers. So we and, and, and just let us know what's, what's on your mind as well. If you have any questions, comments, anything that you want us to do better, uh, more of, uh, we're here uh, and uh, we're looking forward to getting things going here with the Florida Swing now in full effect. And, of course, the Masters is coming up real soon. Another signature event this week. J uh, Jared, as you return to the show with your one of maybe two weeks off you get a year. <laughs> is that all I get, man? Rough. Uh, yeah, I don't give you too much I got, time. I got here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, signature event this week, players next week. So, you know, like, like for one and done, this is like the biggest two weeks, you know, back to back in the entire season because you have the $4 million top prize this week and then i think it's like four and a half million the highest of the entire year for the players next week so um you know get get ready to to burn your studs uh you know at, at least one of these next two weeks if not both of them yeah and uh, another uh long shot winning on the pga tour crazy uh not a surprise i mean not a no. surprise this for this one you know if you've been if you've been paying attention yeah we we have definitely talked about Ekrot and and matter of fact I I which was the event when he was leading after the second or third round do you remember because I know that's when we said yeah. after he faltered like on day three or four we we said what we normally say with these talented young kids that are, don't that aren't in that position very often that is well this yeah. is the learning process and the next time he's in this position it'll be a much more better opportunity for him to close the deal. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah. Was it the Amex? He was, uh, in contention. It might've been the Amex. That might've been but, it. Um, okay. Yeah. And you know, if, um, yeah, I, I, I wish I had caught it, but, uh, he, you know, he didn't have a, he, a strong finish at Mexico two weeks ago because the putting was horrible, but he had had his best ever approach event in Mexico. So there, there were definitely signs that, you know, he was, coming into form, uh, you know, ahead of the Honda. You know, and no, just, I don't know what's going on here, but, and, and I don't know if we're going to, I think the only thing we could do is to start blaming the, the players as far as their, their talent, because <laughs> we keep going into these events where you take a look at the, the under par winning scores and they're at, they're at a low level. Mm -hmm. And in the last two or three years, they're all going up now. And then what was it? Seventeen under par yeah. at Bay Hill. I mean at uh, PJ National. Jack was not happy about that. Let me <laughs> let me tell you because that was crazy. You cannot. That's not PJ National. I mean seven under par is usually what Jack yeah. wants. Not seventeen under par. Well, yeah. So two two comments on that. First of all, they they changed ten from a par four to a par five, and they added like twenty yards. So so essentially, we should have expected the winning score to be about four shots better. At least you know two par than it had been just because of that change. The other thing is I was watching PGA tour live on Thursday morning, right when the tournament started and they had one of the rules officials on and he flat out said that they made the course easier this year to attract better players. Yeah. I guess, you know, these players are saying they, they don't want to go to, you know, this tournament and, you know, get, get crushed, shoot over par, miss the cut or whatever. They want to go make more birdies. Um, so, you know, they, I think they, you know, widened the fairways a little bit. I think the rough was down a little bit. Um, and th the other thing too is, you know, for most of the rounds there is not much wind, and that that tends to be what, what what makes this course so difficult. You know, beyond beyond all the water in play. Yeah, I mean there was wind, but except for one day, you're right. It wasn't like an, and we didn't have those drastic. It was calm in the morning and really windy in the afternoon deals. So. Yep. Yeah, uh, so that combination, I'm sure, had a lot 
uh, maybe everything to do with it. But um, we'll see. We'll, we'll find out next year whether or not Jack's happy about that. Maybe the players are. And if, if they are, and then it will attract more uh, players, then so be it. The other thing is, and Jan and I talked about it last week, was because we had talked about it, and that is the signature events, which we have another one this week. And then how come there was only one different from last year to this year? And um, as Jan mentioned, and big surprise, of course, has everything to do with sponsorships. And uh, it's not just, oh, okay, PG Tour is going to start rotating signature events. No. if I mean, Now, look, if, it, if an event says they can afford it and they can raise the sponsorship money, then they'll, they'll get a signature event. But if they can't afford it and they can't raise the money, then you know it's not like the PGA Tour is not – is preventing uh, events from having signature events. It's just all up to the sponsorship of those, of those events, whether or not they can raise the money. That's it. So we'll find out whether or not Jack, I, I can't, I can't imagine Jack can't get that done. But the thing is, is then you're going to probably change the date as well, because you can't have it. I mean, there'd be too many bundled up at, at one you know, right. two month period. So, yeah. You might have to move this like to I don't know May or something or June. I don't yeah, know. I mean, yeah, I mean they're going to always have to be spread out in different parts of the country, right? Because you want to be you know golfing down south this part of the year. Once you get to June, July, August, you want to be um, further north, so you're not baking. So yeah, that that definitely plays a part too. But it, as always, as you said and as Jan said, it's going to going to come down to the money. Now let's take a look at because uh, we talked about the trends and the trends are always important on this show and the stats and. Uh, I just want to take uh, want to do this more often too, and let's take a look at whether or not the trends held up from last week, and uh, they certainly did. So uh, some of the trends that we talked about, for instance, uh, was uh, let's see, I'm gonna uh, let's talk about average world ranking. So now the average world ranking of all 18 winners uh, at PJ National is 111.6, and uh, Eckroat went in at 101. So it is now 50%. 50% of the winners at PG National are um, outside the top 100. And so uh, that continues. Uh, also, we've still never had a repeat winner at PG National. Nobody's ever won at PG National twice. Four of the last six winners now have won their maiden PGA Tour uh, event victory. And seven of 18 all time broke their maiden at PGA National. So that continues, and uh, what also continues is, uh, is is taking a stranglehold on the event going into the weekend because all 18 winners began the weekend inside the top 10, and if you just talk about the final day, the final round, 17 of 18 now, uh, all-time winners at PGA National started the final round either first or second. How about Which that? that surprises me. That surprises me because it seems like such a volatile course with all the water. I, I think what I, th- I think what it probably is, honestly, is the guys playing with the lead can play more conservative and not take on the water as much as the guys chasing. They have to, you know, take more aggressive lines, attack pins, and they probably end up getting wet uh, in that case. So I, I guess if you think of, think of it that way, maybe it is a you know course where you want to be playing with the lead. All right. Um, I also want to do an update on futures because we talked about futures the last time you we were on the show a couple of weeks ago. And unfortunately, the odds have dropped because of another win by Joaquin Neiman. But he now mm-hmm. has to be somebody you really we, – we talked about him, uh, especially at the Masters, uh, that he's a guy – that and, and I took him um, – I, I think I took him at the Masters, and I think that's it. That's where I took him. I think I had him at the time at 50 to 1. But now he's all the way down to 25 to 1 now, I think. Uh, after another live tour win. And so, uh, by the way, Neiman happens to be on Jan's uh, fantasy team. So she's uh, reaping the rewards there. But yeah, Joaquin Neiman, he, we know the kid's talented. So oh, yeah. is this his year? What do you think? Yeah, I think he could definitely win a major. I think he has the game to win a major. Um, now, as of like, Two days ago, I don't think he was in any of the other three majors. He got he just got an invite to the PGA Championship yesterday. Um, as soon as I saw that news, I went out to check his odds, and he opened at you know he, they, they kind of released him at thirty five to one. He's still thirty five to one, um, which isn't not a bad number. It wasn't good enough where I wanted to bet it immediately, but um, I don't. Oh, thirty five gonna... to one at Masters. Thir- no, so he's twenty five to one for the Masters. Oh yeah, right okay. about that. PGA Championship. 
35? You know, they, they, okay. the, they added him to the odds board, um, you know, when he got that invite, and he's at 35 to 1, which, again, I think is fair. Um, I don't think you're going to get much higher than that, so if you do want to bet him for the PGA, you probably do so now. Yeah, and forget it now as far as uh, taking him for uh, futures for the Masters. It's too late. Yeah. It's down to yep. 25. Now, if you want to take him, you just wait because the odds will probably move up a little bit. Uh, now that is, uh, you know, I mean, he'll have a little bit of time to cool off, unless he wins again, of course. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, I think that, uh, uh, you know, you'll you'll get a better number just being patient now. Okay, so let's get ready to uh, preview this week's event. We're going to go over the stats and the trends. Oh, speaking of majors, one last thing. Rockface, one of our uh, viewers, uh, when we were talking about the majors, uh, he said, Tom Kim all majors so uh, rock seems to have a player in mind and that's going to be tom kim he's going to bet tom kim on all the majors and try to see if he can uh all he has to do is get one of them what do you think about that one tom kim winning a major already at this point in his career you think it's too soon he's a, he's a player i honestly struggle to figure out i i feel like i never get him right i um, mean even if you look at his stats like he he doesn't have a, a weakness right like he can be good at every part of the game in certain tournaments it's just his inability to you know string string it together where he's you know good good enough in all facets to win so he's a tough player to figure out his his odds for the majors i was looking when i saw that comment they're they're pretty fair you can get them at you know 35 40 50 to 1 for some of these so it's okay you know it's not not a bet i'm willing to make now but if he if he does show some form um heading into any of the majors he's definitely someone that that will be on my radar i think he can i think he can win a major despite the fact that he's so young right now Okay, first, let's take a look at your stats. I'm going to throw the stats up there. And there, uh, first, we're going to go with the top 10 event history. Then you've got the top 10 proximity, 200 plus yards the last 12 months. And then we're also going to pop up top 10 Bermuda short game, 75% putting, 25% around the green over the last 12 months. So talk about those uh, two, you know, the, the the two creative uh, yeah. stats talk, talk about those yeah so, and just starting with event history that that's a big part of what i looked at this week because bay hill is the third most predictive course in terms of previous event history um i think it's i think masters is one i think it's um tory pines is two and then and then bay hill is three so i think event history does matter here you want guys that ha have had at least a high finish here before ideally um proximity from 200 yards now, this is a long course it's nearly 7500 yards we get 29 percent of approaches at bay hill come from 200 plus yards that's well over the tour average of 23 percent so you're, you're going to have those long approach shots i want players that have shown the ability to, to you know be good on those long approach shots over the last 12 months so see the list there a lot of the big names also tom hoagie surprising to me um luke list who just flashed at another long course at um riviera so you know he's interesting um and th then again you get some of the, the big boppers rory scotty cam young hovland showing up in proximity 200 plus and then bermuda short game i wasn't on last week to talk about bermuda stuff as we you know got to the first florida event of the year but i i find and i don't have numbers to support this but i find that bermuda maybe more than any other surface kind of has a, a split where you have some guys that are really awesome on it they just love the surface you have some guys that are really bad on it. I know Morikawa sticks out to me as someone who just really struggles on Bermuda surfaces. And um, man, I I played some golf down in Florida a couple of years ago and it was on you know Bermuda for the first time. I could not figure out how to chip for the first like two rounds I play. It's just super. The, the, the putting wasn't an issue, but the chipping um, was just a lot different than what I'm used to. So I could kind of see how it could kind of throw some of these guys off. So I, I did look at. Um, who's the best on um, Bermuda over the last 12 months. And I took, I weighed it, you know, 75% of that putting, because putting does tend to be more um, important in, you know, for uh, finishes than short game. But I did, you know, fa factor in short game as well. And you can see the top 10 kind of, you know, Bermuda specialists that are in this, this field this week. And I have actually uh, three of my picks in, uh, in that uh, third and Perfect. maybe most important stat that you have up there. Uh, so we'll get into that. Um, matter of fact, uh, yeah, before we do that, uh, as far as trends, because you were talking about the history, and w w let's go over some, some interesting trends here. 
Uh, 11 of the last 17 winners are former major champions, including four of the last six. Not a surprise. See, that's the thing is that here we go again. We're going to a tough golf course. This is one of the toughest golf courses in the country. Are is that gonna, are we gonna are we gonna see that represented again, yeah. or are we gonna have lower scores again? Uh, that's gonna be interesting, and I think we'll find out right away on Thursday. That's usually the case, but yeah. I hope so. I, I want to. I want I'd like to have a, a you know one event this year so far where the <laughs> the winning score is like 10, 11. Right. You know? Well, yeah, I'd be surprised if this one plays easier because this is one that's kind of gone in the opposite direction of PJ National again. You know, they talked about they wanted to make PJ National yep. easier. This is a course that I think it was in either, either like 2018 or 2019. They got a new superintendent, and if you look at the winning scores since then, they've actually been, you know, higher. It's played tougher over the last five or six years than it did before that. There's been no winner to finish better than minus 12 over the last five years, so. Um, if it gets if it gets like you know beyond beyond minus twelve as the winning score, I'd be I'd be pretty surprised. Yeah, the la- well, let's see. The last two are nine under and five under, and out of the last four, we have also a four under. So we have three in single digits in the last four. And by the way, that that is as tough as it's been, almost ever. Right. So like you yep. said, they are toughening up this golf course, and and interesting because, uh, and, and I don't know if this is just a coincidence but th- there was a stretch with where five international players had won in a row well now the last three winners are americans so uh w- w- uh, why i don't know but again the, yeah there there for for a lot of last week to the lead and i know and an american ended up winning but there were you know the, the leaderboard last week had a lot of euros and internationals on it and i think that tends to be a thing in florida because wind is such a factor and you, you generally see, you know, the Euro players, especially just they're more used to playing in wind. And so, so I do think it makes sense that the Euros uh, tend to do pretty well on these Florida courses. Now, uh, contrary to what to, uh, goes on at PJ National, the last 28 winners at, at Bay Hill ranked inside the top 100. So you don't get those outside 100 ranked players that are winning at Bay Hill. Paul Goidos uh, is the only one um, that, uh, if, you, if you take a look at it, that uh, kind of, st- he, he was the last one before the streak began, and that was back in 1996. He was the 265th ranked player. 11, but interesting, 11 of the last 14 winners did not rank inside the top 10. So that's, that's interesting. It doesn't mean that even though top 100, is, is, and, and you do have major winners, just don't be thinking, okay, now look, it's a signature event now. So, yeah, so mm-hmm. you are getting everybody. And I think that number is going to change over the last few, over the next few years. But then again, the way this season's gone, uh, <laughs> I'd be surprised if a top 10 player won. <laughs> and we so. had Kediyama win here last year. So, you yeah, know, long shots can, can win here. There's, yes. there's, a, there's, a, there's also a bunch of high end players that often didn't come here before it became a signature event last year. You know, Justin yes. Thomas comes to mind. I was actually you know, looking into him as a potential bat. He just he didn't really play here before last year. So well, he I had one event, but that was all the way back in 2015. And Patrick right. Cantlay had never played here, and, and Shoffley exactly. had only played here once. Yeah, so I think that speaks to you know someone maybe the high high end players not winning, and that that also factored into my bets too. Like, you know that that kind of tells me those guys don't love it here, and they're they're playing because it's a signature event because of the big prize pool. You know, that, that to me, that look, and, and again, we talked about it last week, and I think the only reason that you're you know, like, you, like you said, yeah, the players don't want to play because it's a tough golf course. To me, the only reason I could think that is money because it's a lot easier yeah. on an easier golf course to, to get in the top 10, the top 20, you make money. Otherwise, yeah. if I'm trying to. If I'm trying to win big events, majors, I want to play a tough golf course. I want to get my my game battle tested right. in the toughest conditions. So, but then again, we you know we, we do see players like Rory and, and other players that, that you know there will be players from now and then that, that'll play at some of these events. But yeah, it's uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that. I mean, doesn't it, doesn't everybody have enough money? But I don't know. I mean, it's not me. Okay, so uh, also no player before last year had won on his first appearance since 1990 
when Kitayama did it last year in his first appearance. So that was a long streak, and Kitayama broke that in his first appearance winning last year. Um, seven of the last nine first-time winners made at least four prior appearances before winning, but the last two winners only made a combined three appearances before winning. Scheffler had just, uh, I think, one event, one appearance, then he won, and now Kitayama goes in and he wins. So uh, that's that's interesting that the last couple of winners haven't needed to have a lot of experience before winning here. Um, but also, to your point before, eight of the last nine first-time winners made a previous top 25 here, and five of the last seven made a previous top five here. So um, you want to keep that in mind. No playoffs at Bay Hill since 1999. That's surprising. Surprising. Even though eight of the last ten winners won by just one stroke. Yeah, just the last few APIs I can remember. It's been super tight coming on the stretch. So. Yep. Would not, would not be surprised if we get a get a playoff this year. And there have only been 21 individual winners in the last 31 years, with four multiple times winners, meaning Tiger Woods won this event eight times. Els. Every, uh, Avery and Roberts won twice. So uh, this is an event that, unlike last week, again, very different. No two-time winners at PGA National. Here's a different story. If you've won this event before, you can definitely uh, win again, and that has a lot to do with just uh, being familiar with the golf course. So we'll talk about where winners come from a little bit later on. So let's uh, take a look at the odds now. Let me pop that up. And you can see, of course, Scheffler. And this has pretty, been pretty much the deal this year. You got Scheffler as the top player. You got McElroy, the second guy. And then there's a, a gap. Um, and there you go, Hovland and, and, and the rest of them. It's the same old story with these players. Just uh, going over the odds here. Let's see if I, I see anything uh, that sticks out to me. Let's see. Minwoo Lee, I believe, he's playing here uh, for the first time, I think. Uh, he's 35-1. to 1. Uh, Keegan Bradley's odds have dropped, which I was not happy about because I like him this week. He's down to forty-five to one. Uh, Wyndham Clark keeps getting good odds at fifty to one. Uh, you got Thigala at 50, fifty-five to one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so those are uh, here, the two guys at the top. I've the two guys at the top. I've noticed drifting, meaning you know their odds have been getting bigger. Are um, Max Homa and Justin Thomas. I think okay. Homa opened at like twenty to one. He's twenty five on DraftKings now. I think he's thirty on FanDuel. Um, then Justin Thomas says his odds have gotten a bit bigger too. But you know, jo Justin Thomas would be the ultimate if he ends up winning this week because you know everyone w was on him. Yeah. At uh, Riviera and he was horrible. And, yes. You know, he comes comes back this week and, and wins. It, it would uh, it'd be very fitting. Yeah. Screw you. <laughs> Screw you, buddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Uh, if you had to take Scheffler or McElroy, and, and again, it's very rare that either one of us will take single-digit players, <laughs> yeah. but it's a signature event, a one-and-done. This this is the week where if you're going to take these guys, so it's a difference between picking them in our picks and one-and-dones. Right. So let's just talk about both. Scheffler, McElroy, you got two, both of them have won this event before. This will be Scheffler's fourth appearance. This will be McElroy's tenth. He's never missed a cut. That's a good one and done um, uh, note there. N yeah. All nine of his results are in the top 30. Eight of them are in the top 15. So you know pretty much if you're going to take Rory McIlroy on one and done, you're going to get a pretty decent result this week. So that's the kind of reason why I think, you know, and you're getting a little bit better odds, that I, I, I'd take McIlroy over Sheffield this week. Yeah, if I was betting them, I'd take the extra, you know, Two, two points on, on Rory and take him at eight to five over Scheffler at six to five one and done. I am pretty much deciding between these two guys. I'm, I'm burning one of these guys this week. And honestly, I might burn the other one next week at the players. I might just have to decide, you know, which one I want, where um, both guys have won here. Rory has a long history of being excellent here, which makes sense. It's a you know long golf course. that's going to, you know, favor the bigger hitters. And then, you know, Scheffler has just, been awesome here the the one the one time he gained strokes putting he won even last year he lost quite a few strokes putting still came fourth so um it's been an excellent spot and you know again you factor in the big big prize pool 
you know, tied for the second biggest uh, top prize we're going to get all season. I think it makes sense to, to use one of these big guys. All right. Then we've got that gap where we have Hovland at 14, Shoffle, Cantley at 16. So we got those three guys there. And uh, again, Cantley only played once. That was last year. Very impressive fourth. He's coming off his best finish of the year, the fourth at Genesis, even though that was a terrible way that he ended the weekend, including on Sunday when he was in firm control. Uh, you've got Shoffle, who's played here twice and has combined six over par. So this is not the week to take Xander Shoffle, even though he has four top tens out of five this year and a fourth at Genesis. Hovland, that's the guy that I would take out of the three. It's, it's not even close. Um, I was, uh, I, a matter of fact, uh, one and done. Uh, Hovland is somebody that I would consider. Uh, 10th last year, runner-up the year before that. That's a combined nine under par. And uh, the only thing I'm concerned with is he hasn't gotten off to a great start so far this year. His best finish was 19th at Genesis. Yeah, that, that's my concern with Hovland, too, and why I, I'm not going to take him in one and done. I mean, he's been excellent here, second place in 2022, 10th place in uh, 2023. I just, seems a bit off. I mean, he was he was, he was was bad at Pebble Beach. He bounced back and finished 19th at Genesis. He did gain off the tee and on approach. The, the, sh- the short game is what worries me, and the short game is important here. You're, you're going to miss greens. You know, you're going to have some tough up and downs. His short game is kind of um, – reverted to you know 2021 2022 two form or you know that was the, a weak part of his game so that's my only potential knock on Havlin. i wouldn't bet him at 14 to 1 i think um i'm gonna save him save him in one and done for hopefully a spot where he's you know kind of playing better heading into the event yeah and uh let's again we, we, we got to bring this up because this is just it's it's getting crazy but eight events right now on the PGA Tour this year, the average opening odds per winner is 156 to 1. Uh, Ekro is now the, let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth out of eight winners this year with odds of 100 to 1 or more. And I think the I think the lowest odds to win so far was Jake Knapp, right? Yep. Jake <laughs> that's Knapp. Cool. Jake. Exactly. Is the lowest at 40 to 1. And then the other two, the 60 to 1 shots, Clark and Matsuyama, both needed to tie or break course records to win. And that did it at 60 to 1. I don't, mean, don't feel bad if you don't feel bad if you hadn't haven't hit a winner yet. This yeah. Year. It's been tough. <laughs> so the question is, is when will that come to an end? Will it be something that will be a big deal all, all season that, yes, yeah, eventually, of course, these guys are going to win. But still, is this going to be like a long shot season in general? Or once one of these favorites win, does that then go back on a, on a completely different trend? And we start we see all the top guys winning again. So we'll see. But uh, one of these weeks is going to change. And uh, nobody's ever won yet. Well, nobody's yet to win this season with odds of less then 40 to 1. Okay, next up, uh, we have uh, Ludwig at 18 to 1. Uh, Spieth, Burns, Morikawa, 20, 22 to 1. And here we go with picks because I have as my top two picks Jordan Spieth and Sam Burns. Mm. And uh, Spieth has only played here twice. He's finished fourth in both, uh, in both uh, appearances, combined 13 under par. Don't forget that even though he uh, he was DQ'd out of Genesis, he was still only two strokes behind eventual winner Matsuyama going into the weekend. He had a 66 in his first round. He was sixth at Phoenix uh, and it's also third at Century. So he's off to a pretty decent start. And then Burns, he's only had one top 10 here, and I get that, but he's, on, he's really playing better than I think we've ever seen him play in a stretch now of four consecutive top 10s, 10th at Genesis, 10th at Pebble, and more important, uh, doing some uh, more research on this, this is a really good and, and a good Burns could be my uh, one and done pick too. This is this is the type of week that you want to take Sam Burns because if you look at it, he's a Louisiana native, went to LSU, he's got five PGA wins, two of them at Valspar, and uh, that that's two wins in Florida. He's won twice in Texas. He won in Mississippi. 
He's had strong results in Texas and Tennessee. And so he definitely does his best in the South and the Southwest. And even in his lone corn ferry win, he did it in Georgia. So uh, throw in the fact that four of his five wins on the PJ Tour have come between March and May. So this is the perfect time if you're thinking of taking Sam Burns to take him. And as I referenced before, both Burns and Spieth are on uh, are, are high on uh, on that list uh, that you put together uh, for Bermuda. Yeah, they call him Bermuda Burns. So, you know, that you definitely want to play <laughs> in Florida. He is, he is second on our list um, of top Bermuda players, you know, short, short game on Bermuda. Um, and I was surprised by this, too. As part of my model this week, I did factor in how these guys have done on long, difficult scoring golf courses over the last two years, which I expect this to be Bay Hills. Definitely a long course. I expect it to be difficult scoring. Sam Burns is third on that list. I usually think of him as a guy that does better in, you know, birdie fests, but yeah, that's over, the surprising. Last two years, over the last two years, he's, he's been good on tough courses. It's, um, Sammy pulled up Scott. Yeah. Scotty Scheffler one, Max Homa two, Sam Burns three for your three best players on tough golf courses. So Bur- Burns was one of the last two guys off my betting card this week. Excellent. All right. Uh, moving on over now, we've got uh, Fleetwood Homa young at 25 to one and we start with uh, one of your picks max homa uh and um homa uh if, if you look overall he's been uh solid in all four of appearances here including a, a 10th place finish three years ago all of them in the top 25 now he hasn't been playing top 10 or top five golf yet but he does have three top 20s out of his five 16th at genesis yeah, I think the fact that he's been just okay so far this season is the reason he's twenty-five to one. And yep, to me, like Max Homa, twenty-five to one is approaching just like auto bat territory. The guy just wins enough where you know if I see Homa twenty-five, I'm probably just going to bet him. The fact that he has been so good here only makes it an easier bet for me. And I, he's really Homa's really been even better at Bay Hill than it looks like based on his finishes because he's lost strokes putting each of the last two times here. He was fourth best in the field in strokes gain approach in 2022. He led the field in strokes gain approach in 2023. So if he can do that again and putt well, as he usually does, you know, he, he can definitely win here. And again, last point on Homa, as I said, he is uh, second on that list of, you know, best players on tough golf courses. I want Homa on a course where the wing score is going to be, you know, 10, 10, 12, uh, you know, 10 or 12 under. Cause that's, you know, if you look at his history, those are the type of, of tournaments that he, he's often won. Does he have problems on Bermuda? No. Uh, so let's see. He is – let me pull up where he is. He's not as good on Bermuda as he is on uh, POA. But in this field, he's 24th on that list of um, best short game on Bermuda. So, you know, 24 okay. out of – I think there's there's like 70 players in this field. So it's not, it's not his best surface, but he is still a positive Bermuda player. Uh, Young uh, has uh, – similar to Homa. He's played here twice – both top 15s, 10th last year at 5-under. He's off to a yeah. nice start with four top 20s out of five uh, worldwide. 16th at Genesis, 4th last week. And then also Fleetwood at 25-1. to one. And I kind of came close to think to take a Fleetwood, but the problem to me was I don't think he should be 25-1. to one. I think he, exactly. looking at these players that he's ahead of, he should be 30-1. Right. to one. Um, Maybe even 35-1 to one because he hasn't won yet in the u.s for a particular reason and i know he just won at dubai uh whatever in january but that's dubai he has to do this big time and i think he'll be competitive this week but can he close the deal yeah i think fleetwood and cam younger like you said five to ten points shorter than they should be i just it's a perfect course fit for cam young and he's played well here i i can't bet him at 25 to one just what I've seen from him when he's in contention on Sundays. Um, I think Cam Young even opened it like 35 to one. He was on my initial list of potential bats, but he, he's been a popular bet this yeah. week. Yeah. And you know, for good reason, again, he's played well here and he's, he, he should play well here because, because he is such a great driver of the golf ball. I think he'll, I think he'll play well. I think he'll, he's probably a good top 10 bet, but um, I, I don't trust him enough to close the deal to, to bet Cam Young at 25 to one. All right, and now we've got the next threesome, Zella Torres, Fitzpatrick, and JT. You mentioned JT, by the way. Another reason why not just is he coming in off of a bad week, 
But again, I think there might be an excuse. The, two, the excuses we came up with. One, he just never seems to be good on his third week. Mm-hmm. And two, maybe most importantly, he was paired up with Tiger. So probably, matter of fact, even Jan said that she would never bet anybody, anybody. She doesn't care if they're friends with him or not. She would never bet mm-hmm. anybody that's playing with Tiger in the first two rounds. And she would never bet anybody that's playing in the grouping before Tiger in the last two in, in the first two rounds she would never touch any of it she has way too much crap going on with those two uh with the distractions going on for those uh, uh players those whatever five additional players that have to deal with all the madness surrounding tiger um so but thomas has only played here twice 21st last year is not bad for mm-hmm. his second showing yeah so who knows maybe like you said maybe he could now nobody's looking at him he's 28 to 1 if, if he had played well and had a top 10 at Genesis, he'd probably be 18 to 1 or 16 yeah. to 1. So maybe you're getting a bargain here with Justin Thomas. And then the other two players are our picks. You have Zalatoris. I have Fitzpatrick. I definitely would have taken Zalatoris as well. I know he hasn't played particularly well here. He has one good uh, showing, and he's kind of trended the wrong direction. Obviously, you and I don't care about that because the <laughs> fact that he has a top 10 here shows he can play the golf course. The guy is on fire right now. We're still getting decent odds with him at 28 to 1. Um, and his last place, his last finish was that second at Genesis. You would have won if it wasn't for Matsuyama's, you know, crazy day. And then um, Fitzpatrick, meanwhile, uh, six top 15s out of nine. Four of those top tens, the runner-up in 2019, last five years on this golf course, 14th, 9th, 10th, 9th, and 2nd. So I think Fitzpatrick is a really solid play. I like the fact that both of these guys, matter of fact, even Justin Thomas, they're all 28 to 1. Yeah, and Fitz, um, you know, Fitz, that Euro mold, good in the wind, good when conditions get tough. So you know, I think this this is a good golf course for him, as, as he's shown over the past few years. Yet. Zal Torres, not surprisingly, the reason he hasn't, you know, he's only had the one high finish at Bay Hill is because he's struggled putting. He He's lost strokes putting in all three appearances, but he's come top 30 in the field in tee to green in all um, three of his appearances here, including uh, fifth place in the year he came 10th. So, again, I think ball striking wise, he should be at the top of the field. We just need him to roll in some putts. And I do think the putter has looked better. Um, since, oh, it has. We looked at it last this. week. Statistically speaking, oh, he's okay. actually playing really well. He's like in the top 30. Yeah right now and exactly. I putting. think I think he's driving the ball really well too. I've been impressed with the driving. I think he's almost taken a little bit off of the driver just you know from watching him. I know we I know he had to change his swing. Yeah, that's right. Issue, yes. But I feel like he's driving it more accurately, which I definitely like at Bay Hill. And then again, just you know, I say this all the time about Sal Torres, the harder the event, the more I like him. Look through his history, you know, he's been the best at events that have played tough. If you, we do look at those um, difficult scoring long golf courses over the last couple of years. He's 10th best in this field. So the tougher, tougher it plays, the more I like Willie Z. All right. Uh, next up, uh, let's go with uh, Day Minwoo Lee at 35 to 1. And then you have Matsuyama at 40 to 1. Uh, no way, Matsuyama. He's not winning twice already this season. So I'm going to scratch him out. But if you like him, if you took him when he won and you just want to roll with him, he has made eight out of nine cuts here. Just one top ten, though. And he missed the cut last year. Now, Minwoo uh, had a really good show in last week, a couple days ago, of course, uh, or yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to close the deal. Uh, this will be his third appearance, and he's missed the cut, I believe, both times, if I'm correct. Um, so that's obviously not a good thing. Um, so I just don't think this would be the week to take a player on a, on a really tough golf course who's never made the cut when you have so many other options to choose from. And then also Jason Day, that's the guy I'd go with uh, in this group. I don't even, you know, who cares that he's won before? We've already uh, mentioned that that's uh, probably a good thing. Uh, if you take a look at Day, uh, half of his appearances here are top 25. He's got the win in 2016. And more importantly, he's got three top 10s out of five this year. And he was ninth at Genesis, uh, one of the uh, uh, signature events, and sixth at Pebble in the other. Yeah, Day's definitely the, the one I'd bet among this trio if I was going to bet one of them. He he has gained strokes off the tee every single time he's played the API. He consistently gained strokes around the green and putting. It's just like if he can have a good iron week at this course, he's he's going to top 10. So um, you know, 35 is a bit short for me, but I think he's, he's a okay bet at that number. 
Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's uh, he he barely missed out on my list. Uh, he, I was going to put him on my list. He just didn't make it, but um, I'll definitely bet him this week. All right, Bradley on Scott at forty five to one, and uh, Bradley, look, I, I liked him a lot at sixty five to one. Now he's down to forty five to one. He's still making my list. I'll put ten bucks on him out, out out of my money this week because I was going to bet him anyway. But I don't like to drop from sixty five to forty five. And the reason that maybe people are betting him, he's made eleven of twelve cuts here, five of those top fifteens, runner up in two thousand fourteen, and the last three years he's finished tenth, eleventh, and tenth. Um, he did miss the cut at Genesis though, but it was eleventh at Pebble, and of course he uh, lost in that playoff at Sony. Uh, early on this season so uh and with bradley similar to zelatoris you know bradley it's about making sure his putting um is good and he has been better of course at putting lately uh scott's the other guy that i would take a look at here because he's playing so well he just continues to play well i just don't know if if, if i'm gonna risk him winning he's never won here before uh he does have a couple of top fives but he's got seven straight top 20s worldwide and that includes top 20s at genesis and pebble yeah, I like the Keegan bat. He's interesting because, you know, for one, kind of for, for me, like Zal Torres and a lot of these other top end players, um, the tougher the golf course, the better Keegan tends tends to do. Um, the other thing with Keegan, it's, it's, it's funny. He's actually a bad Bermuda player in general. Um, he's 42nd on my list of, you know, Bermuda short game. But for whatever reason, he's been really good here. Um, He's gained strokes around the green in all but three appearances. He's gained strokes putting in more than half of his appearances at the API. So something about you know these greens, he um, he he seems to have figured out. All right. Next up, we've got Clark, Tom Kim, Russell Henley, Harris English, Corey Connors at fifty to one. As far as that group there, English is the one that would intrigue me. He had the runner-up finish last year here. He does have six top 30s out of 11 appearances, and he's trending in the right direction with back-to-back top 20s and a seventh at Genesis. Uh, who do you like in this group? It would have to be Wyndham Clark for me. I don't understand why he's always priced the way he <laughs> is for a guy that's you know won um, you know, multiple big events over the last 12 months now. Um, you know, he... He's always tempting for me because I think Wyndham Clark should be at least you know thirty five to one. You know, put put him with Jason Day or Becky at least, yes, at minimum. Um, and you know he Clark has not been good here, which would you know be the, the reason to not bet him. But again, as we said, you know I think he's he's just a better player um, now than he was you know even even when he came here last year. And last year you know was his his best showing. Came thirty fourth. Actually had a really good approach. Um, tournament at API last year. So it would definitely be Clark if I was betting one of these 50s. And I do think he, you know, based on what we've seen from Winnie Clark, if you just bet him every week at 50 to 1 hey, or whatever he is, he'll make he's, out. He's, he's, yeah, he's going he's gonna to make you money. Uh, yeah, because he has improved all three of his appearances 20 over in his first, 6 over oh. in his second. He even, was 20 over? Yes, 20 over <laughs> in his, two rounds? Yeah. Uh, no, he, in uh, four rounds. Okay, that, that makes more sense. He made yeah. a cut. He missed the cut. No, yeah, because he was improving each time from uh, from uh, uh, par 20, then to 6, then to even par uh, last year. Okay, then we've got 55. we got M, who's been struggling. I don't think we've seen M struggle like this before. So he's in a big struggle right now. The gal is at 55 to 1. Knapp and Kirk are at 55 to 1. And... Uh, as far, uh, you know what, I haven't even, let me, while I'm talking, because I haven't posted our picks, so here, here's here's the picks, so there you can see, and I'm posting them at the right time too, because we have our final players on the list. You're taking Thagala, I'm taking Jake Knapp, baby. Yes, wow. I know he's already won, but this guy wow. is just on fire right now. Confidence is through the roof. And uh, you're getting 55 to one. I know, you know, it's, it, you might think, well, he's in a number with a lot of other players, but who cares? I mean, it's all about two things. One course history. If that's not your hot, somebody, you know, horse for courses kind of deal. That's one big thing. The other is more important is how you're playing. I don't think anybody's got more confidence on tour right now than Jake Knapp. And that's why I'm taking him again this week. But uh, the gala is going to be uh, one of yours. Your, your top long shot pick. He went from a miscut plus eight in 2022 
to a 14th four under par last year. Uh, he does have two top fives this year, fifth at Phoenix and runner up at Century. Yeah, and so Hith coming off a 37th at Genesis, which I kind of like because you look through his results, this guy never strings together like two high finishes in a row. You know, he is all over the map, which and we've talked about we like from an outright perspective. We want guys that are either going to, you know, be in the mix or missing the cut or finishing, you know, outside the top 40 or whatever. That's kind of the golfer that the Gala is at this point of his career, at least. Another guy, Sahith, I like him at these tougher events. You even just look at some of the, you know, top fives he's had over the last couple of years. He's finished top five at Waste Management twice, you know, including when it was an elevated event a couple years ago. He's finished top five at Farmers, top five at Heritage last year when it was an elevated event, top five at, at uh, Memorial, one of the toughest courses on tour. So I like him at these spots where, you know, his short game kind of comes into play more. As you said, 14th here last year. And Sahith kind of surprised me. I didn't even realize this. He's sixth best on that uh, Bermuda short game list we looked at. He's a really good Bermuda player. Um, so I think this should be a good spot for him. And it's just, it's an, another number bet for me. Like I think betting Sahith Tagala at 55 to one for the next couple of years, I think that that'd be profitable in the long run. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll he'll have another win, and his next step is getting it done uh, during uh, the meaty part of the season. Okay, uh, then you have – this is not the week, by the way, to take Shane Lowry. Uh, last week would have been the week, and it looked like Shane Lowry because we talked about Lowry before uh, being a big Honda Classic guy, and I would have felt like if I would have taken him last week, boy, I've got this one. This is it. He's going to do it. And then he just completely yeah. cropped out again. Uh, yep. I don't know what's the deal there, but he's only made one of five cuts here. And that was the 67th last year. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, his odds dropped. So, okay, if you want to take the chance with Shane Lowry this week, you're throwing money away. Um, Hadwin, Van Royen are also 60-1. to 1, And I picked Van Royen up in our fantasy league because I think that there is something in his game uh, that yep. uh, has completely changed. And I think he's now... Uh, putting himself in position to be a really solid player, um, and he's starting to play better as well overall. So he's interesting. And Hadwin also may not, may not be a bad uh, long shot idea. He was sixth uh, in one of his finishes, and he's got four top 15s in his last seven on the season, um, and uh, fourth at Genesis. So um, uh, Hadwin's not a totally bad idea. Ho- Hoagie would be my guy from this list right here. 70 to his one. I- yeah. His irons are on fire. Um, he has gained 3.7 or more strokes on approach in four straight events now. Kind of a mixed bag at, at API here, but he does have a 15th place finish back in 2020. Came 32nd in 2022. And as we said in that, um, at, at the start of the show, proximity from 200 plus yards, the last 12 months, Tom Hoagie, the best player in this field. So, you know, he's not the longest hitter off the tee, but he gets it done with those long irons. All right, Tom Hoagie. Hey, why not? Put a couple of bucks on him. He's 70 to 1. It's a big number. Uh, Post on, uh, by the way, is also in the And Cole, 75 to 1. A lot of upset uh, one and dunners last week taking Cole. And uh, I mean, we're not in any better shape. I mean, I went with Rose, and he was a disaster, but at least he made the cut. Uh, But Cole, wow. I mean, I, I was really close to taking him. And a lot of people did, and he was just was a disaster last week. So we'll see how he rebounds this week. Uh, he was eight over par, missing the cut last year here in his only appearance. Uh, Post on, meanwhile, has a combined 23 over par here in two appearances. Yeah, from from this spot, um, I think Hoygaard sticks out to me as just a, a talent play. Yeah, he, he's, like, he, you know, he was uh, 60 to one, wasn't he? Now he's 80 to one. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard any talk on Hoygaard. Um, I'm not sure has he has he played here before. You know, yes. I don't. There's there's nothing in the numbers I can point to with him, but I, I do think he's just a better player than these other you know 80 to ones that he's listed by. So if you wanted to you know take a flyer on a, a big talent, I think Hoygaard makes some sense. Yeah, he was four over par, missing the cut in 2022. He's trending in the wrong direction, so uh, you know that's one thing. Jaeger, meanwhile, he's missed two two cuts in his last three. He was the non-cut guy for a long time, but now he's starting to miss cuts. But when he's not missing cuts, he's, he's actually, I think he's got two top fives in in, in there. Yeah. So uh, yep. keep that in mind. Also, uh, Matthew Pavon, Jan picked uh, Pavon up on her fantasy team this week. Uh, so she's going with Pavon, who's already won, of course, this year. Uh, Bazootenhoot 
is somebody that I think is another good long shot play because he has a pretty good uh, history here at this golf course. He's played it four times. He's been in the top 23 of those, including one top 10. Um, and by the way, he's coming off a miscut. Uh, and, and don't worry about that because uh, when he when he uh, finished second at the John Deere in 2022, he's coming off a miscut. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, some other long shots I'm, I, I would keep an eye on. Ricky starting to look like he's close to maybe getting out, but this is not a great venue for him. But again, you're getting 90 to 1 with Ricky. Our boy Luke List is also maybe a potential mm -hmm. long shot play at 90 to 1 as well. What about you? So I actually bet Emiliano Grillo at 120 to 1 when the ads first came out on Monday morning. He's down to 80 to 1 now, so I, I wouldn't recommend him as a play at 80. He didn't, you know, make my official card for the show. But this, so he, he's playing reasonably well so far. He hasn't missed a cut so far this season. He's kind of played steady golf. Last year, Grillo finished 39th at the API. He led the field in strokes gained tee to green. He lost nine strokes putting. Now, I remember Luke List was in a very similar spot at uh, at uh, Genesis last year, where I remember looking at the numbers and, like, he had had this unbelievable tee to green performance at, at the Genesis in, in 2022 and horrible putting, and then, or sorry, 2023. And then look what happens in, in 2024. That's right. He's in the right in the mix on Sunday. So I'm kind of hoping to capture uh, something similar with Griot this week. If he can have the same type of ball strike performance and actually not be a disaster putting, um, I, I think he, he could be in the mix. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, by the way, he's made 11 of 12 cuts at this golf tournament, but just one top five. Still, you're at 90 to one. And list three top 20s out of six uh, with two top 10s. That's not bad uh, on a tough golf course like this. But here's the strange thing. His first three appearances, 18 under par combined. His last three appearances, 21 over par. Mm. Uh, something's, you know, who knows? But, you know, sometimes you change something in your game and all of a sudden golf courses yeah. tend to uh, go the other way as well. Um, and then Grillo, four top 30s in six appearances with one top 10. So not just last year, he does have a history of playing pretty well at uh, Bay Hill. And I don't really yeah, And again, that's going to that's that's been a lot of ball striking stuff for Grio. He hasn't putted well here in, in general, and especially last year obviously. Um, but the the tee to green stuff, the the approach play especially has been for whatever reason really good at this course. Um to note as far as any other players just taking a look, Chris Kirk, six top 20s out of 11. Uh let's see. Uh Corey Connors has finished in the top 25 three straight years with a third place finish in 2021, but he hasn't had a top five since the Texas Open win uh, last year. And uh, Justin Rose has eight top 25s out of 18, three top fives and a runner up. But his last five years, two missed cuts, excuse me, three missed cuts, a WD when he was five under par and a 63rd. So he hasn't played well here lately. Um, and uh, he did not play all that well last week either even though he made the cut. So I think that's it because, again, this is not the, the event that you want to be taking super long shots. So Now the, uh, the, the streak's going to end this week. We're going to get a winner, <laughs> you know, 35 to 1 or lower. There you go. See, Zella Torres and, uh, was 35 to 1 before the odds dropped. Um, yep. Just quickly on the uh, where winners come from, uh, once again, not a come-from-behind event. So you want to get your money early. The, but the last 15 winners started inside the top 25 after the first round. Okay, so you do not want to be outside the top 25. But only one first-round leader during that spell, and that was Jason Day in 2016. Uh, Kitty Amis started second after the first round last year. Uh, after round two, 13 of 15 started the weekend in the top 10. And going into the final round, 25 of the last 26 winners – Started the final round in the top four. Francisco oh. Molinari started 17th in 2019, five strokes back. The only one uh, out of that uh, list that did not uh, follow the top four trend. And the farthest back a winner has started and won after the third round was six shots back. It's been done twice, but not since 1984. So you definitely want to make sure that, look, Take a look at maybe that top 25 uh, results after the first round. 
make your decisions there because you're not going to get great odds going into that top 10 into the weekend. But yeah, mm-hmm. first round, top 25, see what you got and uh, see if you got some players that are still getting good uh, odds if uh, you haven't already yeah. taken them. Yeah, I'd say uh, the last thing too, I'd say keep an eye on the wind too, you know, as we get into it's like, you know, Wednesday night. And then if you're doing any, you know, in tournament betting, keep an eye on the wind because that, you know, that can play a, a huge factor at this golf course. And that's, uh, what is that, Orlando? Orlando, yeah. Uh, let's see how Orlando is going to be. Let's see. Orlando. Oh, one and done. As I'm looking for the weather. So I'm down to, um, my, my, my six is down to four. And uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to go with Spieth or Day. Um, but my final four, uh, believe it or not, Nap is in my final four. Because I'm like, you know what? Wow. Maybe if I do him and he were to actually do something crazy, nobody else is going to take him. So, yep. um, but the the top three that are more more probably a way I'm going to go: Burns, Zalatoris, and Fitzpatrick. So those are my one and okay. dones. Yeah, I'm I'm very likely going either Scheffler or Rory. Um, if if you want, if you wanted me to give you a third, it'd be someone we didn't even really talk about. It'd be uh, Oberg who I think is just an awesome fit for this course. Um, I, could, I could definitely see him. And he even played here last year and played pretty well, you know, considering how inexperienced he was at that point. So, that's right. He did. He, he was 24th last year. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yep. Usually he doesn't play events. Uh, it'll yep. be the first time, but not 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 so much. Yep. Okay, so the weather, uh, taking a look, we have uh, the winds we'll be picking up on friday saturday and sunday the weekend winds are 14 miles an hour so it doesn't look like we're gonna have much rain but um Perfect. it looks like most of the wind on saturday is in the early is going to be earlier in the day but again that could be still for the entire round so you just want to definitely both both days that if there's going to be wind it's going to be earlier in the day and uh but like you said t- take a look at when because sometimes yep. you know there could be a five five mile an hour difference as far as the wind, exactly. um, as you said, and it is going to start getting warm too. Because uh, taking a look at the uh, just taking a look at the, at the weather, you're going to go from uh, 83 on Friday to 87 on Saturday. Ooh. We're 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 still at early March and it's 87 degrees. <laughs> It'll cool off on Sunday. But that's going to be a brutal day uh, for the players who are probably used to the weather at this point in the season. So that's going to wrap it up. Uh, the players next week. Wow. I know it's a signature event, but, you know, it's we don't need anybody to tell us it's a signature event. Um, it's like a major. So and by and it's a very hard event to handicap because Yes. Hard. You, you get maybe one or two players that have had nice runs at players. Ninety eight percent of the of the of the players there up and down, miscuts and and top fives, and you just never know when a player is going to play well there. Yep. This week is a course history week. Next week is not a course history week. Um, but man, the, the the players is awesome. That back nine is there. So much that can happen on that back nine. It's a great great event to watch and bet on. But another event that'll have a lot to do with wind and weather. Yep so all, right, all the all these florida courses. yes yep. yes that's what makes them fun so yep. uh be alert check us out on discord if you have any questions during the event that's the best way of reaching us we'll do that as well if we have any updated picks or information we want to share with you we have a link in the description over here for that um and that's going to wrap it up we'll be back for the players preview next week don't forget jan is going to be at the valspar event the week after the players so we're going to hook up there at some point and do some cool stuff and then much more including jan being at augusta for the masters we're going to find out about uh hooking up with her while she's there as well so jared uh enjoy the golf this week uh good to have you back good to be back greg good luck enjoy api yes absolutely see everybody next week don't forget to subscribe.